Let's talk about the blueprint. I'll open it up. So there's a few things that we need to gather initially. I've got to put some things into groups. So I have a function here that will ID the components. I'm going to hide the player pawn because otherwise it's like a big circle and it's in the way. And then we'll set some rotation values, the initial rotation values for the geometry. And then we will make an array, sort of a, a top to bottom array for each wing uh, so that I can procedurally animate them with a, a little bit of sign thing. I've got a way to trigger the Niagara system in the sequencer. And then I've got a function here that will begin the logo rotation. And then, again, that's also something that I trigger via the sequencer. So here is hide pawn. First thing I want to do is get all actors of class pawn. Uh, we'll go through the array. There's only going to be one of these, but it's still outputs an array. And then we can just set actor hidden to game and, and make it a new hidden and it will not be visible. Uh, also, this is all kicking off on event play. So uh, maybe I'll take a look at that super quick. So in the persistent level, if I click on the select icon right here, we'll open the level blueprint. And then if I go to event begin play, we have the sequencer for the logo project, and then we can just kick it off. So basically like we just start playing it um, once uh, at event begin play normally. Uh, you might have some other some other way of triggering this, but this is uh, this is the only thing required there to get that going. So okay, anyway, that's the that's how the sequencer gets its uh, push. All right, so there's we're gonna hide the pawn initially, and then I need to uh, ID the components. So I'm gonna get the default scene root, which will be this one right here. And just drag it into the scene like this, and then get the children components. These are all the things that are attached to it. We'll do a little for each loop over all of those. I'm going to look for these two components or these two tags. There's going to be letters and there's going to be logo geometry. So I think we looked at the tag on the logo geo. That's the, the one tag I'm looking for. Pretty sure I don't need this. And then on the letters, I also want to know about those and they've all got a tag as well. So we're going to create an array letters and geometry and they're going to be down here there's probably some stuff in here that i i don't end up using i can't remember i didn't really clear it out probably new var zero uh, but i can live without that one anyway so we've got scene components here uh letters and geometry so i just need to gather these things up so that i can iterate over them and and do specific things uh, later on so the way that this works is if the component has the tag i'm looking for a little branch here will evaluate as true and then i can set this array elements so i'm going to go ahead and Add the letters. We're going to get the length so I know what index to add this component to. And then I just have size to fit turned on. So when this is zero, this will be the first index. And then when this has a length of one, we'll be adding this to one, which is essentially the, the second slot in the array because they start at count zero. So this is a, a little trick for that. So we can go ahead and, and grab all these things and dump them into the appropriate array for referencing a little bit later. All right, what else was it? Set rotation values. Here we go. So what I want to do is I want to randomly orient the logo geometry at the at basically every time it's going to be unique. So we have our geometry array, which we have now populated. We're going to do a for loop over that. And then I've got a new array called my rotation vowels. And I'm going to go ahead and just basically create a random value between negative 180 and positive 180. Here, I don't have to get the length of it. I can just use the array index because we're just doing a one for one where every element in this array is going to, is going to have a, a matching element in the rotation vowels. So once that's all done, at the end of this, this for loop, we've got this completed execution line here. What we're going to do is we're going to go through, grab all the geometry, do another for loop. And then I'm just going to set the rotation based on the rotation value to each piece of geometry. In this case, it's going to be the z-axis. We're making a rotator. And then I'm going to set the relative rotation. So this just positions everything at the start so that it's sitting in the most far out rotated position based on what we're, we're randomly generating here. And then we're doing the floater array thing. So I'll go into a little more detail about how this is set up, but essentially what's going on is I have a top to bottom array. I mean like physically top to bottom. And then I'm just making an array of that geometry. So I've got the floater array left and the floater array right. And you'll see we're doing the same trick here with the length and just making an array. And so what I do for the flutter is each one of these basically gets a, 
I'm not sure. You know, I think I'm going to hold off on, on, on going to that. But essentially, I, I need to just set this up. Uh, and unfortunately, there's not a not an easy way to do it other than just like manually setting it up. So that's why I've got this giant ugly thing here. So once we've got that, make Flutter arrays, right? So we've got the Niagara system. So I guess at this point, we can talk about how the sequencer and the blueprint communicate. So I have this trigger Niagara event. Let me clear my tag there. There is this one thing that you've got to enable, call an editor. That's going to allow this to be run within the editor, either in or out of play mode. And then within the sequencer, because the sequencer has access to the blueprint, because it's, it's embedded here, if I want to create an event, I can just go to the blueprint that I'm, that I'm working with here. And then you can hit, hit track and then go to event and then trigger. So that's how I create all these and then I just rename them. So once the track exists, you can essentially make a keyframe. And then if you double click on that keyframe, it'll open up the director blueprint, which is the sequencer's blueprint. And you can see here, uh, this is how a, an event within the, the director blueprint can call an event on the blueprint itself. So you can see the blueprint is included here as an argument. I can pull off here and I don't know, whatever. Just any of the functions that I have on that blueprint, I can go ahead and call them. And then I think this thing needs to have its call and editor turned on as well. And this will now fire when the timeline passes over that key. I'm going to go ahead and delete it because I don't really need it. I'll hop back over to the blueprint. So we're going to trigger the Niagara system. And I guess we could talk about that. It's uh, actually, we're at eight minutes. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. We'll pick up the, uh, the, the next video. We'll talk about the Niagara system.